record it at any point that you would like. Recording. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the desktop GUIs browsers weekly call IPFS, mostly JS in this part of the IPFS world anyway. Uh, let me share my screen, which hopefully is the same screen that you will be seeing. There we go. Today is August 14th in this part of the world because we're not in Australia. We have a few people here today who I've seen before. Welcome everybody. First thing on the agenda, we have an update on Embedded JC, IPFS and Brave. Lido. I, I honestly just <laughs> started testing the demo. One second. Uh, yep. So uh, I can uh, maybe share my screen quickly. Um, so uh, a quick update on embedded JS IPFS in Brave. Uh, it landed in the stable channel. And uh, the improvements are it, if you switch to embedded uh, JS IPFS in Brave, it will automatically pick uh, check if the port is available, and if not, it will pick the next one, so there are no port collisions. It will automatically persist external node config, so if you are switching between embedded and external, it will want like mix ports, it will remember. You can use local Go IPFS, then switch to embedded one. And <clears throat> what finally landed is a delegated peers and content routing. What, what, uh, the problem with embedded JS IPFS in Brave is that we don't have uh, TCP transport yet. So you are not able to, and we don't have DHT. So we are, unless we are already connected to a node that has uh, data you want, uh, you won't be able to get that data because you, you won't have any means of finding a peer ID of people who have that data. And what delegated peers and content routing does, it basically uh, gives you uh, DHT lookup capabilities without uh, running uh, TCP or DHT uh, in JS. It's basically delegating those DHT requests to remote uh, nodes. And uh, that way, uh, maybe I can do a quick demo. Um, so that way, yeah. So this is Brave Nightly, I think. In settings, we go to the very bottom and there's IPFS companion. It landed in the stable channel, so we just enable it here and it should just work. So I have Go IPFS running locally, so it's already connected. But if I go to settings, and uh, if I switch to embedded plus Chrome sockets, you can sneak peek here in node config that there are uh, delegate nodes that here. Uh, you can provide your own, but for now we use the public ones. Uh, and we are online. We got some peers. Uh, we are also using signaling servers. So in case we have no WebSocket capable peers from DHT, we still have some peers uh, from the signaling server. And um, I think uh, the web UI should load the first time with will take some time but it should load eventually um, or maybe it's too slow for now yeah so anyway uh, why delegated routing is important is because if i was not connected to anyone with uh web UI before, um, I was not able to fetch it. And now if um, it, there's a person in 
the swarm that has this content I want, uh, I can get uh, its uh, PID and uh, their addresses uh, using delegated routing. And also when I add stuff to, oh gosh, when is it here? So if I add stuff to uh, IPFS now, um, it was added to my local node and it, lo it loaded from the embedded uh, node. And what's interesting now is that if I add stuff to my local node, I want other people to be able to fetch this data from me. However, I don't have public IP in web browser yet. Uh, so this is where uh, delegated uh, routing uh, helps. Uh, when I add stuff to my local node, the delegated routing automatically asks uh, delegate nodes to prefetch the content I've just added. And then that node will make the content available on the network. So even if I go offline, uh, this content should be still available for people. Uh, it's not, uh, yeah, so web UI loaded. Uh, we got some peers probably on the peers page. Um, my laptop is a bit slow as usual, but my usual reaction. Um, so that's more or less an update. Um, what I wanted also mention around uh, this uh, embedded JS IPFS in Brave is that the delegated peers and content routing does not fully solve the discovery problem. Um, if I want to open, if I add stuff, it gets added to the network and the network is uh, notified about that. However, if I want to open things that are new and open them from the gateway, uh, that's when it gets tricky because um, my, my, oh gosh. So my, ga my gateway running in, uh, in Brave, is not able to fetch this content. It has no peers that are capable of talking to over web, web sockets. And we are discussing adding a preload for uh, all MFS operations. I believe it's, uh, uh, did I link that? Yeah. So that's the, like the second uh, link under delegated content and peer routing in meeting notes. Uh, the idea is that if we, we request content from embedded uh, gateway, we would preload, uh, use preload nodes to preload that content to preload node, and that way the embedded JSIPFS will be able to open it. Uh, that's just a st stopgap until we have peer-to-peer -peer transport, and the, the TCP transport will probably the, be the next thing. I will be working on as soon as I finish up some other stuff. I realized it was a bit chaotic today. Sorry about that. But maybe there are some questions that will clarify, clarify it. Oli and then Jim. The delegate nodes, who's looking after those? I believe right now those have the same st status as like delegate nodes and preload nodes have the same status as uh, WebSocket star, we just provide them as a default, uh, but people can override them and use their own. Uh, the uh, WebSocket star is listed as uh, for demos only, do not use. Yes. And preload nodes are enabled by default in JSIPFS running in web browser. Yeah. I'm just wondering where, who provisioned the delegate nodes, where did they come from? I'm pretty sure it's uh, Alan uh, and uh, I think Alan, Jacob and someone from Infra team uh, just, to, ju just to prove uh, the concept of delegate nodes. Okay, I need to. Uh, and, for, yeah, and for the record, uh, by default, delegate nodes are not enabled in JSAPFS, only preload nodes. So it's like a messy situation. We probably need to clean up this API, but for now we have preload nodes, which actually are delegate nodes, but have different host names. Oh. 
yeah, so host names are different, but actually point at the same servers. Okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. Um, and did you say this was now available in Brave Stable? Like everyone's getting this? It's available, I'm pretty sure, in Brave, uh, the, uh, Brave Nightly and probably Beta and Dev Channels. I'm not sure if it already landed in, I mean, uh, I'm not sure if the um, toggle in settings screen landed in the stable channel yet. Uh, however, if you have that toggle, it means you can just install it and the toggle will always install the stable version of IPFS Companion. If you want to opt in to like the beta channel of IPFS Companion, you just need to like uninstall IPFS Companion and install beta. Uh, that's how it works for, so for now we, it's just always the stable uh, version for people. We need to figure out how to scale the preload nodes before that lands in stable. Honestly, I believe uh, we may just disable delegates before that happens. My plan is to land like peer-to-peer -peer transport and then that should both sol like solve or at least get us to the better place when it comes to content discovery and peer discovery and remove the need of both preload nodes and delegate nodes because we would need to explicitly disable preload we it would like if a lot of people start running that it would just hammer our preload nodes which are, are already in not the best shape agree that sounds good Oh, so yeah, as a so it's using everything's using the WebSockets transport now. Is that correct for the embedded? Yeah. So right now, uh, the WebSocket transport is the only one we enabled in embedded node. However, yeah. like the plan is to either expert like. Either I would not invest time uh, in uh, WebRTC, in, at least in, not in Brave, because uh, in Brave, uh, the mo more effective way is to spend some time and get like actual TCP transport. Uh, and that's the plan. So we would still have both WebSockets and TCP in Brave. That's the plan. It's just that to use the TCP, it's just a different code to use the TCP transport. So it'd be the same TCP transport. Uh, that's an open question. So uh, the, the, my plan is to first check if we are able to just polyfill all the node uh, libraries like net, dgram for UDP and stuff like that and DNS. Maybe it will be enough. We already have like polyfills for those. Uh, sometimes some libraries require tweaks uh, to be more uh, isomorphic. Uh, um, if not, the worst case scenario is we will just write custom uh, custom transport for Brave. Like if actually the custom transport for Chrome apps, because the API we are using is Chrome Sockets, which is exposed in Brave. However, it's also available in Chrome, Chrome OS, Chromium OS. Um, so that would be like a generic transport. That'd be really cool. And then if, if, that, if while that was working, you could almost like switch the default to like not be the go through the gateway, but actually use the JS IPFS as the default. Yeah, especially if we had like uh, like, like the proxy mode. Uh, Dietrich, I, I would I would love to have a a visualization of all of our connection strategies that we use and how we cascade and fall back to different strategies and different environments. I'm, I'm not sure it would ever reflect reality. It would probably be permanently out of date, but wow, it would be very helpful to understand that, especially for people trying to debug where failures are happening. So if they're trying to publish something, they don't know this entire layout that the, the topology of this is pretty complicated and it's on very few people's heads. Yeah, like right now we in, in JSIPFS README, we have a section about setting up WebSocket star or section about WebRTC. And that's honestly should be like replaced with the thing you described. Like here, here are available options. Here is the state, uh, known problems, 
for people to maybe pick up a issue or dig into. Uh, yep. A, a, a yeah. separate, separate, separate thing. A separate thing is uh, about. Oh gosh, uh, it's a bit late for me. Um, uh, a se separate thing is about. Oh no, it won't come back. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. We, we've got a, a a nice agenda full of things to talk about. So if it comes back, add it at the end. Yeah, I love. <laughs> So it looks like we also have a new desktop beta and RC. Who wants to give an update about that? I bumped this up the agenda on the hope that maybe Enrique would give us a quick demo of the new desktop. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, let me just show my screen. Okay, so uh remove this here we have the new ipfs desktop which comes oh this might not be the yeah but it's from us whatever uh we have like now the um, these two menu options here which are can be used for to call these actions that we already had before but we could you could only use them by pressing the shortcuts now you can use them here you can also move the repository location. Some people don't want to put it on their own folder. Uh, and you can also have like a co-hosted websites list, which gets updated every 12 hours. But that's not the main features. The main feature is the new web, web UI. As you all know, for some reason, it's not opening. I don't know why. Okay. Okay. Strange. Weird. Uh, we already had like a demo last week, but remembering the main feature is that you can now nav can now navigate to all of the IPFS or IPNS universe. Lido already found a bug. <laughs> uh, you can also check the pins. And basically, that's mainly it. I would like to know if you could like install it in your system, check if there are any bugs before we can release the final version. Co-hosting websites. Also, isn't there some experiments on that screen? Uh, what? Sorry? I think that screen also has experiments enabled. Oh, yeah. You can like use NPM on IPFS now. True IPFS desktop. Oh, oh, that, that's a tiny feature. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can enable it. It will install it uh, on the background. If it fails, you will get an error telling you to run the, the, the command manually. Mm. Hopefully it is installing now. It will take a, a while. Um, I don't know if I should like talk about the last point in, ag in the agenda, which is related to IPFS and stuff. What do you think? We don't know what that point is. You should just talk about it. Yeah, it's like about the tree icon. We've, we've talked about it before. How can I hide this like zoom bar? It's annoying. <laughs> uh, we don't see that. Yeah, I know, but I see, and it's annoying. It's in the middle of the screen. Okay, uh, Erica said like it, it doesn't have much time to work on this. Um, I really enjoyed like the styles of the icons on my quest, which I think it's better than having like a colored icon which doesn't match any of the others. The problem is on Windows and other platforms where we can't detect if the user has a light or dark mode, so the icons don't get very, they, they don't look pretty. <laughs> so my suggestion was to use the this new icon for my quest or template one and leave the colored fav icon, fav icon, fav icon 
uh, the IPFS logo on the other systems. What you think? If it looks better on Mac. <laughs> yeah, I do. Don't you? I am. Like, I'm not talking about this one. Uh, we can't do this on Windows. These are just like pictures, images Eric made, but we can't do this. Um, it feels like there was a desire to blend in with the existing icons to go uh, monochromatic. But if that causes problems on Windows, then I would just pause work on this endeavor until we have a better idea. Like it doesn't, I don't think it's causing us any problems. And no. the, existing, the existing colorful one works in dark mode and light mode on all operating systems. I mean, uh, we can like either, <laughs> Ideally, we would ship this in both IPFS desktop on our all platforms, but also like IPFS companion, uh, at least in Firefox. I believe the browser icons, uh, there's like a re recent capability of detecting night, night mode uh, by the browser extensions. Uh, so at least we could uh, detect that and swap the icon when the user has uh, the night mode or maybe swap both light and dark icons in Firefox. Um, the thing is that I, I'm a bit worried if we start like changing icon in one place and leaving the icon in another, uh, people who are new to ecosystem or maybe even people who are already in the ecosystem, they will get confused, like uh, why this one thing looks different. Um, Maybe, maybe uh, let me clarify. Uh, I think that in the in the issue you are showing, I commented that uh, uh, the Keybase and Dropbox icons are good examples because they are not. They are actually the logo of the project simplified to the extreme, so it's immediately obvious what it is when you look at it. And I like the design proposed by Eric. Uh, with those like uh, connecting dots and other stuff, but that I like that in the bigger size, in the small size. I just have no idea what that icon, icon <laughs> is. <laughs> it's just too small. Maybe it's the problem with my laptop because I run in even higher DPI than other people. Uh, however, like it's just like it's just like strange square for me. Uh, there's all those details that it's just too complicated. I feel I feel we should have super simple obvious IPFS cube in black and white. Uh, the existing icon is the IPFS logo. Yeah. It's very recognizable. Yeah. The thing is that uh, I would keep, if you want to change it at all, I would keep the shape, like keep the dimension. I would just like make it black and white. Um, but mm. I'm not, I'm not I'm, sure. I'm, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Like uh, uh, I was going to to ask, like, how would you distinguish between an online and offline node? Yeah, so that's the tricky part because uh, we we don't have many options. We can like fill <laughs> fill the walls a little bit with some shade or, or not. Uh, so that's like an open open problem. It's a, it's a tricky thing, and I, I like I actually I've been thinking about it, and I'm like, what? What in, it's obvious from, to me that like both Dropbox and others, they, they spend some time on those icons. <laughs> There's like a huge amount of time that went uh, to, uh, to, to, so, to solve them. So I, I have no idea how to present our logo in black, black and white in a way that works in a small size. Eric, please help. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you find some help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I generally motion to put a pin in this one and move on. Okay. Let's stay with that. And in the meanwhile, 
And if you have an issue, even if it's got installed. The, the experiments block is way more padded than all the other blocks in that screen. Yeah. It wasn't before, as far as I remember. I'll take a look at that. Yeah, about this stuff, it's all my vision. Uh, Co-hosting websites, you... Co-hosting websites, so you can just add files to the list and they will be automatically, automatically co-hosted. What does it mean? You can, uh, it pins the websites to your node. So if you look in the pins list, would you see CIDs for those websites now? Yeah. I don't know which ones are they, but I believe so. <laughs> and uh, how does like the the refresh, you mentioned it, it gets refreshed every few hours? Uh, yeah, every 12 hours it checks if there's a new hash. Are we pinning uh, like the pinning the new hash and unpinning old one, or are we keeping all the previous versions as well? We're keeping the old ones, yeah. The permanent, permanent permanent way. <laughs> Pretty cool. Any more questions? I, I had a question about the language. It feels like like there's a so first, this is awesome. This is pretty amazing. Because I think it gets pretty close to what people think about when they don't know about IPFS, what they think IPFS might mean. But uh, I'm curious about like co-hosting. I feel like there's we've talked a little bit about people who want to altruistically keep sites alive for other people. And then there's the, I want to read sites offline. And those are really different ways of thinking about why you would co-host or different use cases for it. But we, in this case, the site offline, will it, that won't fully work. You really are just co-hosting it. Or will Companion, if you're running it, serve up the blocks from your local store? I believe it will be served from our local store because it's been, yeah. So yeah. If, the, if the DNS link is still pointing to the same CID and it is pinned and you have Companion set to redirect, yeah. then it would be served from your, your local gateway. Your local repo. Yeah, I guess. So it's I, I guess my point is I I don't wanna I don't want us to undersell how powerful this experiment is. Or maybe we should just sell it more when, when it's ready to not be experiment. Yeah. I have I have a small concern about uh, the, a small concern about the way it's presented. Um Popping up a text editor is surprising. Yeah, I didn't mean to make this a big feature for now. I think once you release it, it's a feature. So yeah, I, would, but... I, would, um, I would encourage you to set the bar high as to what features go out to the public. Okay. Like, how would you suggest to make this? I think it, we have a, a UI. Um, so it would be something that you would present yeah. inside the app. And, and it's pretty good at showing lists of things. <laughs> I guess, I don't know, I have to see, like, hmm. it would go on this section. Okay, I'll take a look at that. I think it, it needs some design exploration. I, I think the feature yeah. is cool. I'm worried that perhaps we we might be launching it a little prematurely. Mm, we suggest me to remove it for now or to disable it or something like that. I, I probably, I personally wouldn't choose to push it out in that state. Um, yeah. but I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to tell you not to do it. Would it be interested to hear some other people's thoughts? Is it is it in the menu? Is it already under like experiments section? It's under advanced. It's like quite easy. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I'd either add a, like sub sub menu <laughs> or other experiments if you want to keep it as is or just like hide it uh, until it lands a new UI in settings in web UI maybe. Okay. Because like the list of uh, host names, it's pretty uh, something we could make a better UI than like text editor probably, and people would probably appreciate that and have like the feature itself could have a bigger engagement from users. Yeah, then perhaps I'll give it like create a sub menu. I don't know, uh, main sub menu or a sub sub menu. Hmm. I would be keen to suggest this goes along with the ex experiments that are already there at the moment, because then we can have some analytics to see when people have enabled or disabled things. Um, then we might need additional UI or Chrome to, to actually list out the inputs. But um, yeah, I feel like it. If I feel like it lives there, or oh, we should start promoting that section a bit more somehow. Like the issue with this. But I was talking about this section, right? Mm. Uh, I don't know how we could add it, add it to this section, like if it was supposed to be a checkbox or something else. Yeah. I think for the scope of this call, we should say that maybe there's some more design exploration to do on this. Yeah. OK. I'll raise an issue about that and ping people. Okay, any more questions about this? I, um, I, I had a couple comments in the chat. Um, what? How much activity does the do the experiments get? Do people do a lot of folks use that use them and comment? Uh, this is the first experiment we're shipping, so we don't have any feedback yet. It's a brand new thing. We're launching experiments. Yeah, it's on the way. <laughs> are we launch? Are we launching it with uh, fanfare and blog posts and parades? Hopefully. <laughs> Back to the uh, the previous screen. Actually, this screen too. I see you have a lot of grayed out buttons. Some grayed out buttons. Is that um, this ones? Yeah, those. And on and on the uh, was it the files page? I think the more, as well as the. Uh, yeah, I guess. Here. Now, yeah. So you have. Yeah. The what did you just They're do? They're the same color. Uh, I'm just wondering why, like, why Explore is inactive? <clears throat> is, is that? Uh, it's, uh, it's inactive because you haven't, like, it only gets active if you type something valid. I didn't know that was the behavior right now. Like the, yeah, we, we, we probably should not gray, gray it out that much at least it should like, the color should be there it can it can be faded out right uh, that's yeah. extremely subtle um you know certainly not accessible but accessibility uh, there's a couple of accessibility issues that we haven't if we have to address down the line uh so i don't want to do real the meeting but um now it says more what it and yep. previously it said add. Yep, it does. Like because here you can like add these files folders or from FPS or any folders, but on some it it only works on in the file section. Makes sense. Uh, inside the directory, if you open like a file, it wouldn't work. So you have the other options related to files. And the same applies to anything uh, outside of the file section of your own files. Those three things don't look like buttons. See, so we might want to do yeah, something. Yeah, this one isn't a button. That's a problem. 
So maybe we should pause on the design review, but I think, um, I think what this is pointing to is uh, a lot of the feedback that has come up in the last few minutes is, is feedback that has come up on pull requests previously that these exact issues about the color of the button, the pins link not looking like a button. I think there's, there's probably a missing step in our process whereby there is a design review before we cut a release of web UI. Um, there's fewer people focused in on web UI now, so we're going to have to lean on process to, to make sure that we keep the, the quality really high on what we put out there. Yep. Super cool. Yes, uh, very, very moved, cool. Should have moved to the next point. Thank you for demoing all this stuff. Yeah. The next agenda item is about language. We have 18 minutes left and a still a few things on the list after that. So I'll, uh, I'll uh, pop in to keep things moving if needed. Who brought up this one? I will be very brief about this. So uh, changing language around some features. Uh, I opened and linked to uh, two issues on that. Uh, maybe I'll make it more readable for people. So uh, first uh, term we use is redirect and redirect. Uh, IPFS companion started as a browser extension that detects IPFS that detects request for IPFS resources and redirects them to your local node and it was like very technical extension and we just kept that language and it just redirects, redirects. Um, and we've added other options and there's like redirect this, redirect that. And uh, right now the UI looks like this. You have a redirect to gateway and then for active tab, you can toggle the redirect for this specific domain. Uh, but it's like unclear, which has a precedence and stuff like that. So there's like more details on this and some proposed changes, basically like just dropping the name and uh, going with different language, like prefer local node or try local node first, mainly uh, because at some point we will have a native support in browser vendors or a native protocol handler in browser extension. And effectively we will no longer like redirect but we will like s provide a native handler, which just handle, handles the request. So we'll, the redirect will no longer make sense uh, as a language provided to the user. And another thing is sorting out the language around toggle, more granular control when we redirect uh, per website. Uh, so, it this toggle was added as a means of just disabling this redirect on a specific website but actually we do more than just redirect and what people effectively want is to just like don't run ipfs integrations on this website uh, so that's like a change of language around that and some proposed terms are here and basically i would appreciate some feedback on that uh, probably on the issue so that others can, uh, can like participate. Um, and the second one is pinning. Uh, the problem is sort of similar. Pinning is a low level term we have in IPFS core. However, when you pin stuff, you just pin the C content identifier, the CID. Uh, you are not able to make, add a label, label for that. And you basically have like, I, I have 800 of pins and I have no idea what, what's what. Uh, so the idea, the plan is to basically stop using this low level pinning mechanism and instead just copy files to MFS. So one, people are able to rename them and manage them using web UI in the file screen. And the second thing is that people will have better control, they can, if, if something is added to MFS, is implicitly uh, pinned, so it won't be garbage collected. 
and if someone removes uh, things from MFS, then it can be garbage collected again. So that's a underlying reason why we want to go away from using pinning API. And if we stop using pinning API, it makes sense to stop using pin as a term in our user interface to avoid uh, confusing people and like mixing different meaning at different abstraction levels. Uh, and another thing is that at some point we will have like a DNS link website, we will have something similar to what uh, uh, Hug just demoed, the co-hosting of website. You will be able to like go to a DNS link website and you will be able to like, uh, like pin, but not pin, like co-host this website and that would effectively bookmark the website and that would be a live bo bookmark powered by PFS. So when you, uh, your uh, IPFS node would follow IPNS updates or DNS link updates and uh, fetch, prefetch a new version of stuff like that. So that's like uh, motivation uh, behind those both uh, proposals to change language. And if so anyone has any strong or even weak opinions, I would appreciate them uh, on the issue, but feel free to ask questions here. Live bookmark, oh, too soon. Thank you. Yeah, it looks like there's a, there's a there's a whole lot to work out in both of those issues. And it does it just dovetails really into the conversation about what uh, we just demoed for us too, the code. So. The next uh, agenda item is also an exciting one. Someone has posed a question here. Should Go IPFS and JS IPFS have web UI check on release checklists instead of web UI PR against them? So a little background is that we missed uh, uh, updating the web UI CID in, when uh, Go IPFS, uh, the last, uh, latest uh, Go IPFS was released. Uh, because up, up till now it was the responsibility of web UI project and maintainer to, after, to make a PR to IPFS companion, JS IPFS, uh, Go IPFS, and all other places when web UI is used, IPFS desktop, um, where every time web UI is uh, released. Uh, and like, my question is, would it make sense to change this process and unburden web UI maintainer? Because like, we don't expect library maintainers to PR every project that's using library. It's the other way around. So that's my proposal to uh, just go uh, and agree with Go and JS and other projects so that they have a checklist item on and they check if there's a newer version of Web UI. That way, Web UI maintainer does not need to worry about that. Thoughts, opinions, thumbs up. I am. Um... I'm not in favor because the maintainers of Go IPFS are heavily burdened and anything we can do to reduce their burden is good. We, we know when a release is done, it, it shouldn't be beyond us to PR three places. I mean, we've, uh, we did not have uh, an item on our checklist. By our, I mean web UIs. Uh, we've added that. So with the next release, it, we, we, we won't miss it. So we can leave it at that. We can add them to others' checklists. I think um, uh, I, it's unfortunate that we missed the Go IPFS release, but I think that, I think what happened was we failed to do what we normally do. And I don't think we should change the process because of that. I think we should just commit to our existing process. Yeah, like uh, as long as we have just three places, we can manage that. But did we? I, I would like to provide a counterpoint. Uh, I feel like the person that the making decisions around another project's resourcing it isn't going to, it will always keep up in that 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 uh, a amount of resources that is unaligned. So 
uh, we have explicitly said that right now that desktop and GUI are lower priority. If the project with the high priority has an explicit dependency and need, then the onus should be on them to own that need. Uh, I also worry that they will ship uh, that if that dependency, I guess, maybe taken seriously isn't the right way to describe it, but that they actually have a hard dependency on web UI working. And this is kind of where the discussion about the test matrix between web UI and desktop and Go and JSIPFS and those all working in concert all the time was around elevating that understanding of that hard dependency that we can't say something like web UI is deprioritized when Go IPFS has to ship with it. So I would like to actually make those dependencies more clear and formal and make Go IPFS and JS IPFS have that, even if we don't change our web UI process and it's still our process to PR those projects, I would still really, really encourage those projects that have a dependency on web UI to have that web UI checkbox in their release process, especially now that, that Go has a release process because uh, it reduces it puts the, the responsibility on both sides and formalizes the understanding that it really is a hard dependency, not something optional. Um, web UI there. And I also, I think, encourages them to test in proactively against it. Uh, make sure they didn't break anything. Um, something I realized uh... Because I had a good point that like Go IPFS teams uh, are already uh, overburdened, and actually, we may have more web UI releases than Go IPFS releases. And if we make a PR to Go IPFS each time we make a web UI release, we actually introduce like overhead of multiple PRs. But that's just like a second thought. Uh, if they have a checklist, they just check the moment they make a release. Um, that's like a micro optimization, but I th we probably want to get to where they're pulling in official releases automatically, and their tests break if they pull in a release and web, and they they pull in a release and run web UI tests and and something breaks. That should be a kind of a halt halting state for both sides. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think we're there yet. But I feel like at least adding it to the checklist gets us like like baby step towards that world. Even if we still end up web UI team that still ends up doing the PR. Maybe that's a happy medium. And uh, and something uh, to remember is that we are planning to support uh, loading the latest version of web UI uh, from IP from DNS link path. So uh, that could be something used in tests. Uh, as well for like for this automated testing you just mentioned uh, that there's some go on, ongoing work to support dns over https but then we should unblock that yeah Oli? just going to say that that is blocked on what you just said uh dns over https yeah we mm -hmm. have a pr against go ipfs someone contributed all right both sides can have it on their list. Uh, how would we go about getting it on the Go PFS and JS PFS? PR the list. PR the list. It's, li it's literally a document on GitHub. Yeah, well, I think that blog post was released, right? Uh, so we have five. We have five more minutes. It sounds like we. Uh, we have maybe and maybe a decision-ish thing towards adding at least having it on the list, uh, but the web UI process doesn't change to PR the three projects. It should be. The next item on the list is a PSA. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a, also a very quick one. Uh, uh, Stephen added uh, the TLS multicodec, so now we can have like slash TLS in multi-others. Uh, the problem is that we like HTTPS is HTTP in wrapped in TLS, but we already had like slash HTTPS, and in web 
we use it in uh, our U U UIs for things like uh, IPFS API um, address, and we show it in multiple places. So slash HTTPS is already used. Uh, and there's like an ongoing discussion on uh, supporting slash TLS slash HTTP as an equal one. And then there's like an open question, which should be the canonical version? Because we have like libraries that convert URLs to multi-others and multi others to URLs and at some point we need to decide. So uh, if anyone has any strong opinions, uh, comment on the issue I linked and there's a call tomorrow if someone is really passionate about this. Uh, that's, that's the announcement. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, we talked about the icons earlier. The uh, last item on there is a question that I added if there's an issue tracking what the known differences in Go IPFS and JS IPFS for running as a server are. Uh, I was thinking about doing something like adding those differences in a table or something like that. I don't know, I had talked about previously. Um, somewhere so that people understand what the difference is. One of the collabs I'm working with had some questions. They had no idea that there were any differences at all and they were just running JSOPFS on the server because it does everything that IPFS does. Um, so having a place where we can broadcast that, knowing what that delta is and be able to communicate in a way that maybe it will help people close the gap considering that there's something like 12 million JavaScript developers. And as far as I can tell, 328 Go developers in the world. So if you have, uh, and know of any issues that track those specific differences, or if there's a meta issue that has a list of all those differences, uh, please add it to the notes and we can do more things with it and harness even, you know, 1% of those 12 million developers to come make JS IPFS better. Woo we have two more minutes. Anything else on people's minds on this lovely Wednesday? It's er raining here. Er Eric and I are going to talk on Friday about gateways and their error pages and, and pages to describe gateways. And it's going to be rad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to track you down, Eric. It sounds like a Friday to me. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> big gateway, you, gateway party Friday. Are you going to discuss like splash screens for loading stuff from remote nodes as well? We might scope it to error pages initially. Jim hmm. pick data URI spinner arise. Watch this space. We we just stay on this Zoom call until then. Until then, not do not literally watch this space. Oh, okay, because <laughs> other people might be watching this on YouTube and then just stay on waiting. All right, that's that's an hour. That was a fantastic hour. Have a nice rest of the week. See you next week. Bye. Bye.